I think we were pretty fortunate, to be honest. <laughs> we had a we had a a good setup. We got lucky that um, some friends of ours really were taking care of us, and there was a lot of space. We were out in the desert in Indian Wells area, and we stayed there after the tournament got cancelled. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a lot of space, not too many people around, lots of we could go outside and move around and we're lucky enough to also have a court there because everything was locked down so um, people were nice enough to give us their private court and it was good it was very quiet no no it was everything was locked down yeah. back then I mean there was nothing going on so it was literally the first I would say two month was uh, literally Grigo and I all I mean only there was no people around, literally practiced a little bit in the morning, then went back and, yeah. Um, interesting because um, I was wearing a lot of different hats, so you're the coach, but you're also like the friend, you're the, you know, there's a lot of time that you, you spend together and there's a lot of stuff that comes up that has nothing to do with tennis where you talk about life and you just you know, you become really close and uh, I think Grigor and I, we have used that time well and I think we get along well. I, I think it was good to get to know each other better because we were still kind of at the beginning of our um, relationship. So I think it, it's different once you've worked already several years with each other. But for us, we started only um, beginning of December, like second week. And uh, there was just a kind of a, pre, uh, a short pre-season and then you immediately flew to Australia and there was always like a tournament going on until the lockdown. So it was a nice time where things were slowing down a little bit and you could really like talk and do different things outside of tennis, mm -hmm. which helps to get to know each other, which helps to understand each other. And really like for me, especially to maybe also see why, why Grigor responds in a certain way in certain situations. He was actually good. I mean, we, like I said, we had, uh, given the circumstances, I think, a, a good time. There were, of course, there are some days here and there where it just gets a little heavy mm -hmm. because, um, you know, also separated from his family and being on the other side of the world and he was missing home a little bit, all understandable. But overall, I think um, we, we were doing well. I, I can't say like anything else. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about that um, before we approached it. And um, I think um, it was a good time to, if we were gonna make that change, I think it was a great time to do it now. And uh, he bought into it. And I think, at least for me or to me, the, the surf looks, looks great. And I think Grigor has used the time to actually get better mm -hmm. um, from a tennis point of view. I think he has become a, a better tennis player in those last three months because we also had the time to work on things, which is otherwise a little bit more difficult because there's so many things always coming up. Mm -hmm. And you got to have, a, I think, for something like this, for a player who has surfed or played a, a certain way for so long, I think it was also a great commitment from him to really buy into here because that's where it all starts. I thought it was good. It was good. I liked it. Um, it was holding up nicely. It's much more simple. Um, the second surf has actually a lot more bite on it and he got a lot of good feedback from other players and other coaches actually. So. Not that we depend on that, but it's still nice to hear positive feedback. I mean, we're all human beings and we like to get recognized for our efforts. And I think it was nice to, to hear that. I mean, we always work on a few things here and there, um, but I think the surf was the main point in that, um, during that time. And then I think other stuff, you just keep working and refining and tuning and uh, go from there. I thought he did well. I mean, we haven't played a lot of time or we haven't spent a lot of time on clay and we just flew over and um, there were, um, I think Lajovic is a very good player on a clay team. We don't even need to talk about, I mean, probably 
one or two of the best clay court players. Um, quality matches. The other match, um, yeah, there were other things going on with the elbow a little bit. Don't want to make it as an excuse, but he felt it a little bit. It was the second match of the day. But overall, three, I think, quality matches. Even the match that he lost to team, I thought, was overall a very good match. Um, he was doing the things that we were talking about and working on. So from that perspective, I'm very pleased. Slow conditions, heavy balls. Yeah, it's just on clay, generally speaking, I think players tend to drop back a little bit more than on the hard court. Yeah, it depends a little bit on who you play, but generally speaking, I mean, he knows his identity. He knows what he needs to do no matter who he plays. And then obviously you make certain adjustments depending on who you play. We'll see, I think there this week there will be Silic and Soric around. so two new guys, but overall it's still just nice to get some matches under your belt. Keep working on a few things before the actual tour starts back. Um, I think again, all of them to me looked actually good. Um, nobody has really competed, so I think that there were a lot of quality ma matches actually. Um, and it was also played fairly serious. It, it was definitely more serious than a, just an exhibition. Yeah, and it just plays different again uh, when there are a lot of people around, you know, the adrenaline, the nerves come in a little bit. And um, not having competed for three, three and a half months, I thought most of the players, or actually all of them, played a good level. Well, there are two sides to it. Um, one side is I think it's great that uh, the USCA does, you know, they, they want to put something out there and I think a lot of players will appreciate to just get the chance to make some money again and go out there and play. The other side is obviously um, the question that I ask myself, what's going to happen, let's say, if somebody gets tested positive and you're in that lockdown, um, are you just going to pull them out of the tournament and then somebody else gets tested positive? Are we, how are they going to handle it? Obviously, I think there will be then you have to stop the tournament. I don't know. will be interesting to see how it plays out eventually, still two months out. Um, so a lot can happen, but there will be definitely very different circumstances than, uh, than there was before. Also, you, not so much freedom in terms of where you stay and what you can do. So it will be pretty locked in. But I think the testing part, that will be interesting what they're going to do with, if people get tested positive. I think it's a little bit the same. He's excited to play. He's excited to get out again. Um, but at the same time, like, I think most of the players are a little bit worried, you know, we not knowing exactly what's going to happen, how it turns out. Um, so it will be interesting. I think for a lot of the players, there will be, yeah, a little bit of fear maybe of the unknown, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have to see how it turns out. It's still two months out, so who knows what's going to happen till then. Well, I mean, this year is a little bit difficult to, I mean, I mean, half of the year is essentially passed by. And uh, so, no, we're not getting too caught up into the rankings, um, not just this year, but never do. Because mm. I think is if you do the good work on a day in, day out basis, everything else will follow. Mm. Um, if you just get too caught up on the rankings or certain results, I think it can get a little bit tricky and can on your mind. So I think practicing and competing as good as you can that's always the, the big bulk of, of any player, I think, and that's what we do, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he can definitely be higher in the ranking, which he has already done. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're shooting for more, but again, what I just said, I mean, you have to do the daily work and there's always a lot of stuff that you can't control, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of good players out there, sometimes you can play a good match and still lose. But I definitely think he has obviously a great upside potential that's out of question. After Sauter, we go uh, back to his home to Monaco. And then um, we have to plan out a little bit um, exactly how we're going to uh, plan the, the practice weeks and how it's going to be then with the, you know, when we travel over to the US. And uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty much what we're going to do.